friends welcome to my workplace at ranaghat west bengal india this is a white intumescent cataract with a very hard nucleus let us see the management of this case this is the main incision on the posterior aspect of the limbus and now this is a paracentesis on the left side of the main incision about 2.5 clock hours away and this is one more paracentesis on the right side of the main incision about 3 clock hours away. In this case I want to stain the anterior capsule of this cataractus lens with tripan blue dye and under this air bubble. And here goes tripan blue 0.06% dye. The dye should touch on all parts of the anterior capsule to get uniform staining. And now this is a bit of adrenaline. Now the dye is washed out with BSS. And then in this case I'm going to use 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose as the viscoelastic substance. And this is the viscoelastic substance. And now see the rexis. The anticapsule is incised. I can you can see some oily fluid comes out. This incision should be like a C, it should be a carved flap. And this capsular tag is converted into a small rexis at this stage. We can call it a mini rexis. Now with the help of a simco cannula or just by irrigation aspiration of bimanual IA or only by irrigation we can remove some cortical matter and decrease the intralenticular pressure. In this case the sub incisional cortex could not be removed by Simco. However the intralenticular pressure has decreased significantly and I shall be able to do the rexis without any problem. Visco has been injected again. Now this is a small nick at the margin of this small rexis. I take the uter tag again, hold this tag and convert this small rexis into an adequate size rexis. In this case, since the cataract is very hard, I opted for a large rexis about 6 millimeter in size. Yes, the rexis has been done. And now, again some more visco. The machine being used in this case is Oatly Cataract 3. I am in FECO 2 mode from the very beginning and ultrasound power is being delivered in continuous mode. Here it is. Push the nucleus little down, bury the tip as much as possible, go through the substance of the nucleus towards the opposite equator and chop this. So this is direct horizontal chop. I call it submarine chop. But in this case there was a leathery band which was connecting these two hemonuclei. And now I am trying to chop each hemonucleus into three pieces. But the, the leathery posterior plate did put a lot of resistance and I could not separate the pieces freely. So I sculpt little more, come out, inject some viscoelastic substance and try to separate the fragments 
manually yes with the help of the chopper and the sensky hook the fragments have been separated nicely and we have five free fragments in this case and now each fragment is emulsified by ultrasonic energy which is 75 percent is case flow rate in this case is 45 ml per minute and vacuum is 450 millimeter of mercury and see how quickly you can emulsify each fragment the power is being delivered in continuous mode and I deliver the power only when the teeth is occluded by the nuclear piece otherwise I am in irrigation so this is the last piece at this time I remove the chopper the antechamber is very stable there is no surge and with 450 vacuum I have completed the case I didn't go to epinucleus mode but for beginners and for surgeons with less experience please follow your safety measures you can decrease the vacuum even you can come to FECO on mode for emulsification of the last nuclear fragment and now I am removing the cortical matter with the help of this Simco cannula at this time the people is getting small because I did touch the iris at around 5.30 o'clock so cortical cleanup can be done by bimanual irrigation aspiration also but this is an instrument which should not be hated this is a very safe instrument particularly in the hands of the beginners you can apply vacuum gradually and you can stop vacuum immediately now in this case I'm going to use a B cartridge so I increased the main incision by 0.2 millimeter so the main incision which was 2.8 millimeter has become 3 millimeter now and this is the B cartridge and here goes the intraocular lens this is a single piece hydrophobic intraocular lens the lens goes into the capsular bag just by gentle taps on the nucleus at the haptic optic junctions by the left hand instrument the lens goes into the capsular bag the haptics take shelter at the equatorial region of the capsular bag and now the viscoelastic substance is to be cleaned very nicely I spend a lot of time in cleaning the viscoelastic substance first I use this instrument Simco 23 gauze irrigate for some time the anterior chamber then I go behind the lens irrigate the capsular bag and at this time I can see some cortical matter and I remove that here also again at 5 o'clock I find some cortex it was removed iris became small so these cortical fibers were hidden by the iris and now the irrigating probe of bimanual IA is being used we must be very meticulous in cleaning the viscoelastic substance to get rid of post of rise of intraocular pressure 
this is simultaneous use of irrigation and aspiration and I am very satisfied now that the viscoelastic substance has been cleaned very nicely we can see the shine over the lens and it indicates that the visco has been cleaned nicely now the side ports are hydrated very nicely so that these wounds close and now this is the final lavage of the anterior chamber the anterior chamber is formed nicely and the case is concluded thank you very much for watching hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills be a great surgeon and serve the mankind with compassion and great surgical skills